dilator and sphincter pupillae are derived from which of the following germ layer the options are surface ectoderm neuro ectoderm mesoderm of the head and the neural crest cells so uh, if you see here the ectoderm mesoderm or the mesoblast and the endoderm are generally derived from the epiblast there is a layer in the initial phase of the embryo that is known as the epiblast and that is divided into ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm and they are going to give rise to different structures as well right now this epiblast generally divide into the three germs layer by the third week of the gestation that is also a very important information so endoderm yes endoderm is there then we have the mesoderm mesoderm uh, the notochord is basically derived from the axial mesoderm so that is something which we have to remember now there is something very special about the ectoderm now the the ectoderm is basically the outermost layer and it has certain cells in the ectoderm itself some of the cells are specialized to perform the function of the mesoderm so some of the cells of the ectoderm generally perform the function of the mesoderm or the mesenchyme and that's why these cells are known as the neural crest cells okay now there are certain other cells which are known as the neuroectoderm and these neuroectoderm generally forms the neural plate ectoderm neural tube and then finally they give rise to cns brain and spinal cord now this neuroectoderm also give rise to very important uh, muscles of the eyes and these are known as the dilator pupillae and the sphincter pupillae and these muscles are responsible for two functions of the eyes that is meiosis and mitosis and these are under the control of the autonomic nervous system so that is very important to understand here now uh, there are certain neural crest cells which are generally involved in formation of a lot of other structures so i'll be just mentioning few the peripheral nervous system the mesoderm of the eye most of skull bones pharyngeal arch bones then we have the aorta pulmonary septum and then we have the very famous that is odontoblast and this was a question which was asked in the neat exam as we are also the odontoblasts are generally derived from the neural crest cells so these are very important things which we have to remember here and since i'm discussing about the neural crest cells i should discuss about a very important syndrome that is known as the djor syndrome and this djor syndrome is characterized by the failure of the neural crest cells to migrate towards the head and neck so when the cells are not able to migrate towards the head and neck then there will be problem with what there will be problem with the peripheral nervous system the secondary mesenchyme aorta pulmonary septum dermis of the head and neck and the odontoblast that's why you will have certain problems in the chain ganglia cranial nerve ganglia there will be cranial neural crest cells that will be uh, affecting the components of the eye as well as the enteric ganglia and yes there will be problem with the bones of the skull there will be problem with the pharyngeal arch cartilage there will be problem with the uh, aorta and pulmonary uh, septum and that is the most common cause of the death as well and there will be problem with the odontoblast of the tooth which are going to form the dentin in the tooth right so uh, there will be problem with the dermal bones of the skull as well so this is what we call the djor syndrome so sometime question can be asked what is the reason behind the djor syndrome so that is the, the failure of the neural crest cells to migrate towards the head and neck but in the this question our question is concentrated towards the neuroectoderm right so the dilator and sphincter pupillae are generally derived from the neuroectoderm so answer to this question is going to be second and it is also going to give rise to the cns that means the brain and spinal cord brain and spinal cord are going to be developed from here only 